Welcome to this lesson on gratitude. This lesson will explore gratitude that cultivates society and protects the earth through the wisdom of others and the science on the human experience. As you begin this lesson, take a moment to prepare yourself for your study and practice. Download the study and practice guide, the PDF, associated with this lesson. Have a pen and paper on hand to take notes and record your thoughts. Remove distractions from your environment. Once you have prepared your study environment, take a few moments to prepare yourself mentally to benefit from teachings in gratitude. Be still. Breathe. Take three to five cleansing breaths. Draw in deeply through the nose and slowly exhale, experiencing the opening of your heart and clearing of your mind. Pause and reflect on what you are bringing to your study. What have you contributed to your community? What do you receive from caring for the earth? When you are ready, proceed to enter our exploration of gratitude, what it is and is not. In this lesson, we will explore gratitude in cultivating society and protecting the earth. The intention of this lesson is to develop understanding of the concept of gratitude as it supports the betterment of humanity and the earth. This lesson is an opportunity to learn about the rejuvenating powers of nature, the greater good of protecting those who are injured by harm to the earth, and the social justice that stems from a compassionate heart. Practices to support you in finding connections to others in the earth will be offered. Let us begin with our exploration of gratitude in forgiveness and atonement. We have been learning about gratitude and the openings that it creates to other virtues, to compassion, kindness, empathy, and a better self. The virtue of gratitude has a profound expansive potential that is described here by Deepak Chopra. Gratitude opens the door to the power, the wisdom, the creativity of the universe. In her book, Living in Gratitude, Angelus Arian writes of portals through which we experience gratitude. They are through blessings, learnings, mercies, and protections. We are all connected. We are connected to one another. We are connected to nature. When we lose our appreciation of our connection to others and to our environment, we lose a connection to our potential. As we receive and express love and kindness toward others and the natural gifts of our environment, there comes appreciation, but also awareness of our responsibility to protect that which is greater than ourselves. Gratitude requires first that we notice Appreciation of nature is, for many, an easy place to begin to explore our appreciation of life. Nature is separate from the stress of daily lives and relationships. It simply demands of us that we stop and pay attention. Gratitude requires us to notice and contemplate the gifts that are provided by the sky, the earth, the water, and the forms of life that surround us. When we pause to notice, we are then able to ponder, to wonder, and to appreciate. When we pause to notice, we are then able to ponder, to wonder, and to appreciate. 
Nature's beauty is a gift that cultivates appreciation and gratitude. The words of Louis Schwartzberg. To paraphrase Louis Schwartzberg in his TED Talk on nature, beauty, gratitude, when people experience the beauty in nature, they often express, oh my goodness. The oh is an expression of awe. The my means to connect with something deep within the soul. It is a gateway for the inner voice to be heard. The goodness is the personal journey to be all that we can be, to be inspired and to connect with the universe that celebrates life. In her book, Living in Gratitude, Angelus Arian reminds us of the natural laws of nature. These are, everything in nature is constantly creating and diversifying. Everything has a purpose for its existence. Everything coexists and fosters the principle of interdependence. It is also part of the human spirit to innately have basic needs to innovate, to apply our gifts in new ways to create something unique and new. We each have our own purpose in life, whether we discover and express it or not. While we have freedoms to be our own person and independent, our talents require our independence to flourish. Nothing in nature is fiercely independent or excessively dependent. We live in societies of interdependence. As Angelus Arian states, The heart of interdependence requires collaboration and reciprocity. Gratitude is born from our acts of reciprocity. There is the beauty of nature. There is also the harshness to nature. Just as gratitude requires hardship to appreciate the good, so too our contrasts of scarcity and abundance in nature. Would we truly appreciate the blossoms of the spring were it not for the bleakness of the winter? To have gratitude is to appreciate the good even when in the presence of challenge, difficulty, or hardship. A perspective that Alfonso Carr illustrates Some people are always finding fault with nature for putting thorns on roses. I always thank her for having put roses on thorns.